Well, hello there, my friends. Welcome to Carpo's YouTube channel. I'm already wearing the funky jacket, but then after I uh, pulled my hair out of a braid and it came out all wild, I thought, yeah, screw it. I'll just leave it. I can't believe how long my hair is getting after looking at some of my old videos. It's the weirdest thing. You know, the other day I thought about cutting it off again, and I'm like, nah, I wanted to grow it out. It more resembles how I feel. So, anyhow, uh, how's everybody doing today? Hopefully you're all doing well. And um, I've made a couple of videos this morning. Some days I just feel like I have a few things to talk about. This one was the one I really wanted to make in the first place, because I think it's an important subject, and it's about narcissism and narcissists around us. <coughs> Some people may not understand quite what a narcissist is and how they may affect their lives in a negative way. And all of us have some somebody around us who's, you know, who acts that way. But I'd like to go into some of the details of what to look out for. There's no diagnosis for a narcissist. It's a matter of, you know, the behavior of a person, how they interact with others, and it's for you to determine how much you can tolerate. But it's not an approval issue. So, for example, somebody might uh, see a YouTuber say, well, this person just wants likes and comments. But that's the same with every YouTuber, right? So having approval or being proud of something or having people give you a pat on the back or say good job is not the same as being a narcissist. <clears throat> but they're rooted in the same insecurity and unsurety that we all have about ourselves. Am I doing a good job? And so... Uh, Today I'd like to just kind of cover the topic of narcissism and although it's not an approval issue, often narcissists tend to lack approval in their lives so they act out. And it's interesting because this is a twofold thing I, I, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to try to go through in the order of the ideas that I had here. Um, one of the things about a narcissist, you know, a person with a type of personality, say, is an inability to compromise. They tend to be the person in the group who always wants to do things their way. And therefore, they tend to be control freaks. And that makes it very difficult to work with them. And to hire them on, whether they're working for you, or with you, or whether they're in your family, a parent, or a child, and or a sibling. And there are a lot of different types of personalities out there, so you can't just label somebody a narcissist. What you're looking for is personality traits and to what degree they have these traits you know that's up for you to determine but often a person who's narcissistic will lack common empathy for others or at least lack the ability to show it to others they might laugh at a person who gets hurt but not be able to say oh i feel bad for them that kind of thing but they're dangerous people to be around because in families you can often cause a lot of conflict by a person who believes that they should be treated differently. And so that's one of the main uh, the main things. They believe they're more important than others. And that's, you know, perhaps they are. Perhaps they're not. You know, I'm not going to say everybody's equal. I'm not going to go into the details and, and, and the, you know, values and, and morals of it. I'm going to say... If a person thinks they're better than others, it's going to make it difficult to interact with them. Um, but we run into it so often that we consider it to be a normal thing. I don't, but that's because I think about it a lot. I expect people to treat others with the same respect, and uh, that just doesn't happen. So, um, a couple, uh, just a few of the simple traits that you might find with these people. They make you doubt yourself. So, you may tell them a story about something you're planning or something you want to do. And they may start out with, oh, that sounds great, but, and then they'll go into details and tell you why it's going to fail or why it won't work. Um, they're negative, but it starts out on a positive note. This is something I've observed over and over with people. Or they won't give you any props whatsoever. Um, they seek out your vulnerabilities. So sometimes when you meet a narcissistic person, they might ask you a lot about yourself. And I'm not saying everybody realizes they're doing this either. Uh, they may seek out, uh, seek out a lot of information about you, and then later they just use all those vulnerabilities as ammunition against you. Anytime you've been in an argument with somebody who has thrown shit you've said in the past or things you've said a long time ago at you, that's the narcissism creeping out there. You know, that's grasping and trying to get the upper hand. And that's one of the things. When a person has... 
they will cheat to get ahead often too. Cheating is made, made, they seem to think that since they are more important, they play by special rules that others don't. And so therefore they expect special treatment by others and if they don't get it, then they retaliate. I've noticed one common trait that I see a lot. People who demean or belittle others who work in service industry, for example. The kind of person you might go out to lunch with and they uh, treat the waitress like shit because they didn't like their toast. Or somebody who is going to treat an employee of a business like crap because they're having a bad day. Um, this is a way of feeling, you know, superior to someone else. But um, often I see this trait come out in narcissistic people. Because they think they're more important, they figure anybody who has a lesser status at that moment can be abused as such. And so often they will seem very pleasant until they've been crossed. You know, the minute somebody says something they don't agree with, it could be just a disagreement about a subject, you know, and the person is instantly telling you, bringing up fallacies and calling you names. So um, that's a passive aggressive attitude. And you see it quite often in narcissistic people. Another trait of these people is they rarely, if ever, admit fault. If something happened, it's never their fault. It's always something else to blame. Even if they directly were responsible for an accident, it's always, well, this material was bad or this product was crappy and, you know, um, it's it never admit fault. That, I, I wouldn't say every narcissist is that way, but it's something I've observed. And um, besides always wanting to be in control of every situation, that this means, I mean, a lot of, like a narcissistic YouTuber would be the one who purges his comment section of anything he doesn't agree with. Um, uh, they want to look good. They want to control the situation. Um, and another major trait is that they will never, hardly ever, if ever, apologize. <laughs> and I'm sure all of us know at least one person who has never said, I'm sorry or I made a mistake. If you cannot admit that you fucked up in your life, then that is a major fault, you know, for, as a human. All of us make mistakes, you know. We all say things we don't mean. But the narcissist group tend to, uh, they don't do it. What they will do is, if even if they've done something to wrong you, you, and you ask them and call them out on it, they will somehow turn it around on you as being your fault. They might even bring something from 10 years ago up. Um, another small thing to note is they, they tend to never say good job or give you inspiration to what you're doing. And it always tends to be about them and their lives. They always want to talk about themselves. Uh, so uh, they might destroy the harmony of a group. And that's a major, major issue. That, and basically what I'm getting at and why I'm making the video. If there's one narcissistic type person you know, in extreme, in extreme proportions, regardless of how you want to call it, semantics, the word, you know, not everybody is a narcissist. People just have these personality traits. Um, it's deeply, deeply rooted in insecurity. And that's one of the interesting things and why it's so hard to talk about. It's, in, it's, it's rooted in insecurity, but there's two ways people go about this. If they're insecure, they either, either become a victim, or they become a narcissist. It's really interesting. And so we were, I was thinking about parenting, thinking, well, is it a lose-lose situation? If you raise your child and always tell them they're a golden child, because this is a going theory that kids are the way they are because they've been raised spoiled, right? And uh, you say, well, if that's true, then what about the people, kids who are raised and told they're worthless and pieces of shit? A lot of those kids also become narcissists because they're trying to get back at the world. They're saying, I've been put down for too long, now I'm going to stand up for myself. Um, I guess the difference would be the one who's always been told they're right has a harder time uh, probably in life because they can't admit that they've done anything wrong if they've never been told they're wrong. It's the participation trophy generation, right? So, um, anyhow, one other, co a couple more notes that I found, you know, that were interesting is narcissism, what I would call collective narciss narcissism that's found in corporations and large businesses. And maybe that's where it hits home the most. They follow many of the same traits as an individual. 
and <clears throat> they're often insecurity based. <clears throat> so in other words, if the business is uh, afraid they're going to maybe not make enough profits, they may say whatever they have to to get there. That's pretty common with people too. Um, they push their views on others, which businesses do that by telling you, you need this. And uh, narcissists always have to be in control and tell you what you need as well. They're the ones who want to tell you how to live your lives. Um, and then the one key one, making us second guess ourselves. If we have an idea about what we think is right, the narcissist will always tell us, hey, you know, you're wrong. You know, this is what's right. Well, corporations have been doing that forever through advertise campaign, advertising campaigns and marketing. You know, telling us that we're worthless, you stink, you need pit stick, man, you need toothpaste, you need shampoo, you need makeup, you know, you need surgery, all these things in order to make money. And so uh, that's why it's key to see these things with, you know, kind of the macro version of the individual. Um, so one interesting concept about narcissism is that hatred, aggression, and cynicism are also based in insecurity but they're a different outlet for it. So if a person can't f truly feel like they're the greatest, then they may turn to aggression towards others or telling others what's wrong with them uh, in, in a more hateful way, you know. Uh, but I guess cynicism is something that comes along with narcissism in a way too. Uh, but they are based in insecurity and that's the key word because we're all insecure. If you're truly secure, um, you tend to be stoic, calm, cool, and collected. And that's what I'm striving for in my life. To not get fly off the handle and get angry, but to be able to get angry if I need to. If my kid gets hurt and they're, or they're doing something dangerous and I need to yell, I don't want to be like, oh, it's okay, you know? Be able to be angry when you need. I don't want to be sad over nothing, but I want to be able to be sad when I need. And then I want to be able to laugh at whatever I want, you know? Having that balance in there. But, um, so, there's a fine line between defense and offense when you're responding to people. And the thing is that people who take the offense, they, they feel like, oh, I've been wronged. And people who take the defense, they're like, oh, I'm the victim. Uh, the narcissist may take either route, but um, it's, it's an interesting, I don't know, it's an interesting personality type. I've known a few in my time. And that's the thing, we need to boost each other up. And when we're tearing each other down, it's not helping anyone, not even the individual, you know. And we've become selfish creatures, and we've always, of course, been partially selfish creatures, but we are social creatures, and we also like to work together in groups, regardless of whether people think, uh, you know, humans are evolving to be these independent beings, you know, th these, <laughs> you know, I don't know. People have some interesting viewpoints about the future of humanity, and, uh, this whole transhumanism thing, but I'm not going to go into that because I'd be totally brought off track. Um, <clears throat> here's the key. We cannot see ourselves ever. We cannot see how we look to others. We cannot get a full grasp on that. It's important that we laugh at ourselves. In other words, for me, it's being able to wear a stupid jacket and let my hair hang down and say, you know, it's okay. Some people are going to laugh and say, ha, what an idiot. Other people are going to say, man, this guy's a total douchebag. Some people will be like, oh, I'm glad he can be himself. It doesn't really matter what people think. It's all about what you're conveying, your message. And I'm trying to convey a message that I find important, or messages that I find important, that I've, you know, found useful in my life. Um, and uh, so there's, don't, I don't want to mix this up with the ego game. Having an ego is different than being a narcissist, and I wouldn't like say egotistical people are necessarily narcissists, but I would also like to say that the ego game is based on, I, I'm more along the lines of the Freudian ego, whereas there's the ego, the super ego, and then the id, which is like the primal ego. And if you don't understand that concept, I'm not going to sit and explain it here, but it basically is this. If you think you can abandon your ego, it basically eliminates everything that it means to be a human. If you want to just be a number and just be like, oh, I'm part of the whole, I'm part of the group, you know, I, I've under, I understand that mentality. I've been in some places in my head where I'm like, wow, we are all one. But individuality is what nature gave us. We look different for a reason. We act different for a reason. It's not so we can just be like everyone else. So you don't follow the pack. You need to be a, a, you know, a lone wolf and do your own thing, but also be able to come back to the pack 
and interact and share what you found without being a complete fucking asshole, like a lot of narcissists are. So, um, the question, I guess, to finalize this would be, uh, the business traits, the traits of the corporations, like I said, that narcissism, versus personal, uh, can they differ? Rather, is everything kind of blown up through a macro lens as far as the individual thoughts and emotions blown up into uh, how corporations and governments act? You know, I guess I can't really explain it very well because it's in here, you know. Uh, I've learned over the years that I tend to see things in metaphors and patterns. And I know that sounds kind of arrogant or, you know, it's not like I'm like, oh, I see different language, but just I've trained myself to do that, to always look for a pattern because I've been able to eliminate so many patterns that way. Um, I'm looking for true connections and things that actually help us in life. But this is one of my more informational videos on a very specific topic of a personality type. You know, there are debates between, you know, there are people who absolutely hate psychology and others who think it's a wonderful way to understand ourselves. Um, there are people who uh, use astrology, like a video I made earlier, and others who think that it's just abhorrent and a complete waste of time. We all want to understand ourselves, and I think by understanding the world, we better understand ourselves, and through honest interaction with other people, we can share our information, and information is wealth, you know? Health is wealth. We feel better when we've got a pat on the back, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Having an ego, a little bit of ego and feeling good about yourself. You know, it's not the pride before the fall, it's that if you're too proud, you'll fall. You have pride in the things that you do, or else you end up not doing anything. And that's what I've discovered. And amidst that, you have to hold yourself back. As a YouTuber who has a moderate amount of viewers, you know, even though I have 18, almost 19,000 subscribers, I really probably only have a couple hundred active, you know, people. I mean, because all those subscribers are spread over so many years, probably many of those accounts aren't even active anymore or aren't used. So, you know, I probably have half of that, I would think, if that. And, uh, but to me that, I've had, you know, I've, I've in the past had people say, oh, don't let it go to your head, but you have a lot of subscribers. And I'd be like, I understand that why people would preface it that way. Because you would think, you don't want your YouTubers that you like to become arrogant fucking assholes. I've known so many. I've been on YouTube for like nine years making videos now, maybe eight years. And in that time, I've seen so many YouTubers come and go. Uh, so many people who are really into it, made a lot of videos and quit, or people who turned into complete dicks. Uh, but then there were the people who succeeded and moved their channel up. And then they went one of two directions, either started following what the extreme news was or like whatever can get views and clicks or they chose to make an impact with it. But either way, they had to fight that egotism of, oh, all these viewers, everybody's watching me. I mean, even for me to have 300 people watching this video, and I'm sure the count will probably be around there in the end, um, it, that's just amazing to me. That's like a fucking auditorium full of people. Like a, maybe a school gymnasium, all right. But uh, that, that's a lot of people that want to hear what I have to say, so. I can see how that could turn egotistical and people could start saying anything they want just so they could have people go, yeah, yeah. And I'll be honest, I know sometimes I say things that aren't, you know, uh, championed, the things that aren't the people, the things that people want to hear, and, but, but I do it because I feel like those are some of the most important things we need to talk about. So anyhow, I could go on about this, but my, my, my main message is to, if you have narcissists in your life, you can avoid a lot of them. but. Sometimes they're closer to home, maybe you uh, work with them, whatever it may be. Uh, just being able to identify some of those traits in people, I think, might help. Uh, the idea that they want to be in control, that they make you doubt yourself and question yourself. Because it's hard enough for us to build an understanding and faith in what we believe and say, okay, you know, I, yeah, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And then to have some asshole come around and say, oh, you can't do that, you know. Uh, that's just, uh, don't let people make you doubt yourself. Constructive criticism is different than, you know, dismissing someone. So, uh, anyway, I think it's dangerous to have people like that around, and I'd, I'd like to see people overcome it as much as possible. That way, maybe people don't want to be that way. But I'd also like to leave on this note. I'm not blaming the narcissist, because the ones I've known, 
it's been issues with their youth or upbringing and it's the same thing I, I have empathy for killers I, I honestly have a hard time having any empathy whatsoever for people who are like pedos or molesters but I also know that they usually had an issue in their childhood that led them to do that the brain can get miswired and that makes it very difficult to hate people just for who they are I'm trying to keep an open mind about narcissists and everyone else and I understand that it's really about how we raise our children like I said earlier the extremes don't work giving your kids participation trophies just for showing up somewhere that's not helping them to build character uh, let them fall down and get hurt don't bubble wrap them but also you know don't beat the shit out of them and make them feel like crap because then they'll go the extreme other way there's a fine medium and it's really hard because there's no one parenting technique that works the best and regardless uh, the kids are so individual it's really hard to uh, you know figure how they're gonna be when they're older and so it's up to us as a society to kind of roll our eyes at the people who act a certain way and so when we believe people completely what they tell us like a lot of cult leaders and religious leaders and gurus that's probably why it bothers me so much that these people are around it's not because they're not teaching good things some of the messages are great it's just that people really believe that there's an attainable uh, state that a person has more knowledge or wisdom than they do uh, about their own life and how to live it when we're all so unique uh, I think even though I laugh at the idea of life coaches and I've always kind of made fun of them if you were to compare them to a religious leader or a guru or a you know a, a motivational speaker um, at least that person is interested in your life I mean I guess if I were to be any of those things uh, being a coach to people's individual lives being a counselor is basically what I call it and uh, it's as funny as it is you know I've never I would never probably want to go through the schooling but I would love to give people advice and be a counselor and that seems arrogant in a way it's weird but I just I want to see people do well I've had so many individual one-on-one -on -one emails with people where I was able to ease their their pain just by giving them a couple words of wisdom and to me that feels so good because I'm always so cautious about what I say hey I don't know I'm, I'm just living my life in my reality but this is what worked for me and uh, then I, I, I see maybe it's because I see so many fake preachers and uh, proselytizers and people who claim to have the truth and then for me to understand another person requires a little bit more about their own life it's a crazy world it's like the people who email me saying hey uh, I have this disease and this disease and what herb should I take I'm like look this is a an important thing do not take advice from individuals uh, be, be careful you know you may need a doctor <laughs> uh, but I understand people are, don't trust anybody anymore so I guess if anything I'd like to be a trusted source for people to come to not that I always have the truth but that I do my best to uh, be honest and fair but I guess a lot of people do you know, honesty is the best policy, but the road to hell was paved with good intentions, and uh, so be careful what you say, right? Like in some of my old videos, some of the things I used to say, I'd make kind of claims I couldn't back up, but that's okay, because we grow, move forward. My camera says that I only have 16 seconds left, and that's good, because I was about to turn it off anyway. Thanks for watching. Peace, everybody.